Well, basically, I was born in South Africa. I did a little bit of work there with the South African National Theatre. Then I left, came over here and went to a drama school. Uh, I was getting, I got a couple of tours of Lilac Time and all the big musicals, mainly doing stage management. And then I came and decided to settle in London. I got a few small parts like barmaids and prostitutes and that sort of thing. So I decided to dye my hair, so I thought my career would change. And I got a carry-on film and I met Barbara Windsor. And she asked me to audition for a series called Wild Wild Women, which she was shooting for the BBC, which was written by Ronnie Wolf and Ronnie Chesney. And about the third day of rehearsals, I had flu, and I just looked like death. I had no makeup on, I hadn't combed my hair. Walked into the rehearsals, and Wolf and Chesney said, you're just what we're looking for. And it sort of followed on from that. They never even auditioned me. They asked me to read in a part in the other series, uh, when someone was off, Tony Palmer was off, and I read her part just for the rehearsal. They were obviously testing me, and I got on the buses. I was the only person who didn't audition for on the buses. I was just so excited getting a series, I thought automatically it would be a hit. But I remember that it was actually the second series that it went straight to number one, and then we sort of knew that we were on to something quite big. And we were all instructed we were not allowed to make commercials because... Uh, you know, there would be a big commercial. Never came, but we were told we couldn't make commercials in case this big commercial came. And then we sort of started getting fan letters, and that's when you knew. And then I remember London Weekend Television, because it was late 60s, you know, it was the hippie period. And I'd just become a hippie. And then I got called in by the head of London Weekend saying, you cannot travel on the train like that. And I said, why not? And he said, because you're recognised now. And that was when I actually, it clicked to me that you had to... There were certain rules and you had to conform and it was successful. I had a poisoned foot and my foot swelled up to about this size. And so I couldn't do any location work. It all had to be done in here. And I always remember them calling a doctor and saying, the doctor saying to me, you can't step on that foot, I shall have to amputate it. And I thought, oh no, my first day on the film. Any rate, it eventually went down, it was all okay. Uh, but of course I didn't do any location work because of that. Except the motorbike routine, you know, when she was being driven to the hospital on the bike separates from the sidecar, which they shot on the last day of the film in case there was an accident. And, uh, you know, you see it and you think, what are you steering with? I was steering with two pieces of string and I don't drive. And so all those screens were real. I was absolutely unbalanced. I was, ah! you know. But I mean, it worked out to a lovely sequence. It's the one that everyone remembers. They always talk about the motorbike sequence. We didn't see any rushes, we didn't see the film. I went and saw the film at Wood Green on the North Circular. It's now Jehovah's Witness Hall. <laughs> I don't know if that's justice or what. But I sneaked in one afternoon with my husband. We just drove in and sat in the back row and watched it. No premiere, no nothing. Because they sneaked it out. They thought it was going to be a failure. Did you know that? Yeah, they thought it was going to be a great failure. And um, so there was no premiere or nothing. And that's how I saw it. Having had the baby in the film, I never had the baby in the television, which I thought was a bit strange. I was just highly relieved because I couldn't have stood this child screaming over my lines any longer. But nobody ever asked. Nobody ever asked what happened to the baby. The baby appeared in the film, appeared in mutiny as a child. I think appeared in holiday, yeah, as a child, but never appeared in the television, just wasn't there. But also holiday in the buses was made after I divorced Arthur in the series. Which again, because I divorced Arthur in the series. And then we did holiday together afterwards and it just didn't, it just seemed to be two separate worlds. It was quite extraordinary. Nobody sort of worried about it or asked about it. Perhaps people just accepted things then. We were, weren't at the analytical state of our art that we are now. <laughs>